So your mouth is responsible for intake. Air, oxygen, stuff goes out to your mouth, food, words, knowledge, everything. Your mouth is very important. It's a major conduit of your intelligence in the flow and your relationship to the environment. Your teeth begin developing in the fetus and it's composed like a bone. It, these are bones and they have a calcium deposit and they grow out and you can see that in this particular picture that there are, as you know, children have their primary teeth and after a while the tooth fairy comes along and then the money pulls the teeth out onto the pillow and as the teeth fall out of the mouth and you collect money for that, new teeth take their place. Now those teeth don't get money but they get the rest of your life. And so there's this system, an incredibly intelligent system, you have two sets of teeth. In fact, some ancient cultures feel that you could have another set of teeth if you do the right thing. But uh, that's another story. But nevertheless, you have a mouth and it has all these aspects to it. It has the teeth and in the back of the mouth, behind the tongue, you have all the soft palates and everything else. So there are parts to your teeth. Everybody's seen this so many times. You learned this about this in third grade and you're actually graded in tests in third grade. All right, class. What are the names of the parts of the teeth? And in third grade, you got a gold star because you said there's enamel, dentin, pulp, and the bone. True? Now, the problem here is that the enamel gets worn away and can get imbalanced because it's all just minerals. And if you, too much Coca-Cola and acid and stuff can leach things. And over bleaching can destroy your enamel and so forth. The dentin is very soft. It's not intended to bite into hard things. It's intended to hold up the enamel. But if you expose the dentin, not good because it's not meant to be exposed to the outside. And then you have the pulp inside with the nerve. And of course, you want to leave that very happily inside, untouched. And then you have the gum coming, covering up the whole thing. So you have many things, but the gums give you clues to the general level of health that you have. All right? In fact, there are certain people in the world, certain health people can look at your mouth and tell you a lot about the quality of your health. Just like there's people that can look at your face and diagnose your health. And people can look at your ear and your eye and stuff like that, different maps. So let's talk about that a bit and what signs of health there are. So in the ancient Ayurvedic, the Vaijas, who are the doctors, they look carefully and could actually give a daily report of how you were doing. Certain Vaijas are trained in looking at your oral cavity and the quality of it and giving a prescription to the balance of your general life. And in Chinese medicine, which was founded basically from Ayurveda, as the knowledge went over the Himalayas, they also have a whole system of analysis of the mouth and the quality of it for your health. And then Usler, back in the early 1900s, he was a Canadian physician and actually was considered the father of modern clinical medical practice. So he was a big thing, a big deal. Um, and he actually made this very famous quote. Let's say it together, shall we? The mouth is a mirror of the body. The secret to good health may be actually in your mouth. We think about health in many parts of the world and many parts of the body and the system, but seldom do we ever go, geez, maybe something's wrong with my mouth that I need to attend to. And so this brings up this whole connection. The connection means that things are linked to each other. Can you imagine a cell having 10,000 and half a million connections? You sit there in the person's brain, way in the back actually, quietly in the back of the person's brain, you just a quiet little nerve cell back there. There's half a million little contacts going, no me, 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 no me, me, me. Every second, a half a million yes and no's coming on to you. So lots of connections, and that means the different parts of the body are connected. We all know that there's iridology, that you can look at a person's iris and say something about their physiology. There's acupuncture maps on the ear and on the tongue, and there's whole body acupuncture maps. So let's look and see how people have connected the idea of the teeth in your oral cavity with health, okay? Without going into deeply with it. So the master connector is your nervous system. And let's see what happens with the teeth. So there's 100 billion brain cells. These brain cells are there to help you if you take good care of them. And they look quite not like this at all. This is a very diagrammatic artistic one. But it has the basic thing where you have a cell body and then all these funny processes. And these funny processes are how you connect with yourself and with everything else. And of course, those processes are many, and so you end up with a tangle of wires. In fact, your brain is mainly a tangle of wires. Most of your brain is nothing but a bunch of wires. Okay? And of course, if they're not properly connected and properly maintained, then of course, those wires break down. It's called the aging process, Alzheimer's, memory loss, and so forth. But that's another lecture. So we want to connect. 
And of course, this is a diagram of a synapse. And of course, one process is coming from some place, another process is coming from another place, and they connect, and there's a little gap. And across those gaps scurry all these little molecules, and then they shut off, and there's a signal. And then more molecules scurry across, and there's this on and off and on and off. And so these synapses, of which you have trillions upon trillions upon trillions in your brain, are what are sparking all the time. As you're listening to us speak, all these synapses are sparking, and out of it comes, oh, that's interesting. And you can actually think a thought with all these little sparks. Quite remarkable. It's hard for a fire to do the same thing, and it has a lot of sparks too, but the human brain, being very cool and low wattage, can do what a fire can't when it's roaring away. So when your brain is roaring away, it allows all this connectivity to take place. And so part of this connectivity tonight is through your brain plasticity is to help you learn and therefore respect and appreciate and therefore do something about your oral health. Okay. And here's one cell, and all those little green dots are different little connecting points. So this cell, this one individual cell, is connected to many hundreds of thousands of cells. And it has to judge all of that at every moment of its life. It's like having a zillion fingers tapping you, trying to send you information. And you've got to process all of that and make one decision. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just to move your arm like this would be a book this big about the sequence of steps that your brain goes through. Fascinating. Now, the problem is, is that you won't develop something unless you think there's a possibility. And over the centuries, it's never been thought to be a possibility to change. But now we know that there are techniques to change your brain, and we'll start using them. And one of them is just to collectively think together about what knowledge is that would help. And when you do that, you can look, for example, at a map of the body here. And this is one of the sympathetic nervous system and so forth, and the cranial nerves. And you can see that the nervous system is connected to different organs in the body. But we're going to show you in the next couple of slides is that the teeth are also connected to parts of the body. And through that connectivity, we sustain the growth of our life. Now, two important nerves. There's a facial nerve, and that is all the surface innervation. So if you touch your face now, the only reason you know you're touching your face besides the tactile response of your fingers is the facial nerve says, oh my goodness, I'm touching my face, facial nerve. But there's a trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal to Gemini is create, all right? And tri means three, so there are three branches to this very important nerve. And three branches go basically across your face like this. You have one above here, you have one across the top of your mouth, top of your mouth and one below. That's why it's trigeminal. All right, everybody want to do this? Everybody take your fingers. You got one around your eye, one above your mouth, one below your mouth. Okay, and that's called what? Trigeminal. trigeminal. Good. This is your cranial nerve, and it's innervating everything there, including your teeth. And so all the information from your teeth is getting into your nervous system. And your nervous system is probably going to have an impact on your teeth as well. So here's another diagram showing that there's two. One comes sweeping down on the lower jaw and goes up into the roots of the canal. And the other one comes in through the top of the jaw down into the roots. And this is another one showing that there's other cranial nerves that innervate the tongue and the back of the throat and so forth. These nerves are there to help the overall oral processes, but we're going to focus mainly on how the trigeminal is a key element in the mapping of your teeth to your body physiology. Another picture of the facial and roots. Now here is the first map we're going to show you. This is a little complicated. You don't have to memorize it. If you want to, you can Google it on the web anytime you want. But basically, across the middle are all the different teeth, all right, on the left and right hand side and upper and bottom. And above and below each tooth, there's a specific organ, and then the glands, and then the elements that relate to that particular tooth. Now, I don't know of any NIH grant which has verified this. That doesn't mean it's not truthful or not useful, and this comes from ancient knowledge. So we'll take it with a grain of faith in it that there is something, because most of the other maps have been found out, so there's no reason to believe that this map doesn't have legitimacy as well. But the other reason we like this is because it's not the only map out there. 